Be careful who you're around, brothers and sisters. When the book says evil communications corrupt good manners, there are many people that carry a very wicked spirit. This is one reason why I never could comprehend why any man or any woman who's in the body of Christ have an interest in studying witchcraft. If you know the law that God proclaimed in reference to witches mm -hmm. in the Old Testament, it was a commandment for them to be put to death. Yes. In the days of Moses, the proclamation was made that I suffer not a witch to live. Why would a child of God want to dabble in black magic? That's right. Well, that subject is very prominent in Africa and also throughout the Caribbean and Jamaica and through all the Caribbean islands. It is also prominent here in America, but you just don't hear much about it. Right. But there are people today that comes to church is having this uh, new curiosity for the indulgence of witchcraft. Don't even buy a Ouija board. That's right. Someone says, it's just a game. Don't believe that lie. Right. The devil work all kind of ways. Mm -hmm. According to history, Egyptians was very superstitious about the usage of mirrors. Right. They felt as though that mirrors was a gateway from the spirit world into their world. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, there are, you ever heard of them folks, what they call paranormals, that go to people houses and all that stuff? Believe it or not, do you know there are people who study witchcraft today that use mirrors hmm. as a gateway to contact spirits that bring them from their world to this world. When I was younger, we had a, what we called a teenage prayer band, and, and uh, I was the youngest one in it. Everybody else was teenagers and in their 20s. And there was a young lady house the prayer band went to named Sheila Purdy. And uh, the devil was there alive and well. I believe her mother, Sister Jersey. Wow, I didn't know you was here. God bless your heart. Her mother, I believe, was a witchcraft worker, Sheila Purdy. Prayer band was over there praying one night. Washing machine, starts shaking. And no clothes was in it. And it wasn't plugged. Them young folks started praying loud. You know some of them older washing machines when your clothes spin and it really rocks everything in the room? Uh, that's, what, that's what the washing machine was doing. Uh, the spirit world is not a world that one should play with or take for granted. That's right. To deal with the spirit world is not just dealing with God. Anything you want to learn about spirits, you can learn enough of it right here from the book. Don't go outside of the Bible. Amen. To learn it from the Bible, you're in a safety zone. That's right. To try to go outside of the Bible, you're in danger. Because what can happen, you can call spirits to follow you. That's right. That's what happened to my brother, Rick. <laughs> My brother Rick, <coughs> there were some folks we grew up with on La Coleman Street. And uh, he was, you know, talking to this one sister. And, uh, but the sister's mother was a witchcraft worker. The individual don't have to be a witchcraft worker. They can just be in that atmosphere and which can cause them to be a spirit carrier. What is a spirit carrier? You can be a spirit carrier and don't even know it because you're around it so much. And that's what she was, a spirit carrier, didn't know it. 
Rick was coming home and those spirits followed him. And uh, he said he first noticed walking home, there was two dogs just standing like statues, watching him. He said, man, when he got to Jerome Street, he broke camp. Ran up the street, ran in the crib, and just dove on the couch, you know, to get his breath. He said, while he was laying there, something jumped on him. Now, he wasn't asleep. He just got in the house. But while he was laying there, something jumped on him. And he said he felt the hair of a woman hitting his face, but he couldn't see no one. And what jumped on him starts strangling him. And the hands were so large until the hands wrapped around his entire neck. And he could feel the breath of whatever was on him just breathing down on him. He would just fight. But couldn't see nobody. He said, then it stopped. He jumped up off the couch. He went upstairs. Mommy turned the light on his room. What happened? Pictures start flying everywhere. Sound like something from an exorcist, don't it? The spirit world, it is a world that you should, should never try to tap into. If someone invites you to a seance, don't go. Don't think you got so much Holy Ghost you can deal with it. That's true. Or a ghost going to run you out your house. That's right. Give me the 19th chapter of the book, book of Matthew. Are you already there? Amen. All right, come on. Acts 19 and at verse 13. Don't, don't let no one call you. That's right. I remember there was some brothers that used to be with me in Newport News, two twins. Yeah. And I remember when they just came into church good. They came to me and told me there was a girl they knew that was possessed. And they was going to band together and cast out the devil. And neither one had the Holy Ghost. My Lord. I told them, fool, leave the devil alone. That's right. You leave the devil alone. If the devil ain't bothering you, don't pick a fight with him. That's right. That makes sense, don't it? Yeah. I use this, <laughs> this parable. If you cannot first get a monkey off your back, does it make sense to go fight a gorilla? No. First master the monkey. That's right. Then perhaps one day, one day. you will take on the gorilla. Don't let nobody convince you to go somewhere else in someone's house to how you're going to cast out some spirits. That's right. And you going in there pouring oil on their walls and on their doors like you priest Cunningham. <laughs> Stay away from that ignorant thinking. That's right. Stay away from it. I had somebody ask me, they watch the show that come on about the paranormal and whatnot and seeing spirits and is that stuff true? Everything that's in the Bible is true. That's right. In fact, we got a brother among us who's like that. He sees spirits all the time. Brother Shields. He said he'd been like that since he was a kid. A lot of you don't know it. He said since he was a kid, he would see spirits of people that done died. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, when it first started happening to him, he was, he was scared to death. They would just run up on him. And he didn't know them. He said, many times, and I would be preaching upstairs. He would, the whole pulpit would be full. He said, but what he would see was like by the, the apparel of the people that would be up in the pulpit, the apparel was like from the 50s and 30s. And he said, when I would be preaching, he said, sometimes he said, he'd see from head to waist. And from waist down would just be like a vapor. He said, and I remember asking him, I said, so what they be doing when I be preaching? He said, sometimes they just look and nod their head. He said, but then some would be angry. They would just look at you with hate and contentment. He said, but then some, they'd be nodding their head, agreeing with you. And he said, I just sit there and just, he said, I don't, I don't, I don't be knowing what to think and what to do. <laughs> the spirit world, it, 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 that is, that is, someone said, well, that's a gift. I don't want it. 
You know, because there's some folk living I don't want to see. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I'm pretty sure there's some folk living, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Right. So why I want to be looking at some dead folk? <laughs> 